Hello all, welcome back. In this video, we will look into the Python implementations of all the activation functions we have seen so far. I will walk through the implementations and plot the graphs of all these activation functions in Colab. I am not using any libraries here except numpy and matplotlib. I am using numpy for calculating the exponential and logarithmic terms and matplotlib for plotting the graphs. All these implementations are in pure Python. Let's start with our first activation function, step. This is how the step looks like. And in its basic form, the threshold is 0. So if the input is greater than or equal to 0, then the output will be 1. Otherwise, the output is 0. So the same thing I have implemented here. My input is x. If the x is greater than or equal to 0, then return 1. Otherwise, return 0. I am taking the inputs ranging from minus 6 to plus 6 for plotting the graph. I calculated the step output for these range of values and I am plotting the graph with input versus output. Let's see how it looks like. So if you observe for all the negative values, the output is 0 and for 0 and the positive values, the output is 1. Let's go to sigmoid function. The sigmoid function is an S-shaped curve and the equation is this 1 by 1 plus e power minus x. This exponential we can implement using numpy. So the definition looks like this 1 by 1 plus numpy exponential of minus x and I am plotting the graph for the same range for all the activation functions I use the same range minus 6 to plus 6 so let's plot the sigmoid so this looks like this the range is between 0 and 1 whatever the values are there the inputs it will convert that into a value between 0 and 1 next we will see the tan h activation so the tan h activation function is this exponential of z minus exponential of minus z divided by exponential of z plus exponential of minus z and the curve looks more or less same as sigmoid but the limits are different so if you observe the limits are minus 1 to plus 1 instead of 0 to 1 so the same equation i am implementing here if you see i am using numpy exponential for all these e power x terms so numpy exponential of x minus numpy exponential of minus x so this is the numerator and this the same thing but with the positive sign here that's the denominator we already have an implementation available in numpy. We can directly use that with the numpy tan h. I am plotting the graph between minus 6 and plus 6. So this looks almost same as sigmoid except it is a bit sharper. Also the limits are minus 1 and plus 1. Next we will see the relu activation function. So relu is piecewise linear. So for positive values it is linear. It will give the same output here for positive values and for negative values it will give 0 as the output. So the same like if condition we can use otherwise we can do the simple equation like this maximum of 0 or x. So obviously for positive values x will be the maximum value and for negative values 0 will be the maximum value. Depending on the input it will return either 0 or x. Now let's plot the graph of relu. So it looks like this from 0 to negative values it is the output is 0 and for all the positive values the output is equal to input and let's see leaky relu so if you observe this this is relu for negative values it will give 0 and leaky relu it will give some fraction of the input for the negative values so for simple case it is 10 percent of the input so i am implementing this using the same formula like relu maximum of 10 percent of input or input let's plot the graph so this is how it looks like so for negative values it is having some value which is a fraction of this input and for positive values it is linear next we will see soft plus activation soft plus activation is linear after certain range and below that it is non-linear so the formula is logarithm of 1 plus e power x i have implemented using numpy numpy log plus numpy exponential so it's pretty simple to implement let's see how the graph looks like so it looks like this next we will see gelu activation function so the equation for Galileo activation function is a bit complex and it has ERF functions and all that but it has approximations in terms of tan h and sigmoid. So this is the approximation in terms of sigmoid. It is x into sigmoid of 1.7 x. The same thing I am implementing here sigmoid of 1.7 times x. So the Galileo is x into sigmoid of this and this is the sigmoid definition. Let's see whether we are getting this graph here. Yeah. So if you draw the axis here it has some negative values here same as this next we will see swish activation function swish activation formula is x into sigmoid of x and the graph looks like this so it is very simple x into this is the equation for sigmoid 1 by 1 plus e power minus x so this total is swish activation now let's see the graph so it looks like this it does have some negative values here next we will see mish activation mish activation is kind of modification from swish because it is inspired by swish 
So Swish is x into sigmoid of x, whereas Mish is x into tan h of soft plus. So if you remember, this is the equation for soft plus. So the implementation is this x into tan h of logarithm of 1 plus e power x. So this logarithm of 1 plus e power x is soft plus. Now let's see the graph of Mish. So it looks like this. Next we will see max out activation. So there is no particular graph for max out activation because it is different from other activation functions. It takes all the inputs into consideration for giving the output. This z1 until zn are the pre-activations or weighted sums like shown here. And it will take maximum of all the weighted sums. So it looks like this. So let's suppose I have this layer. It will take maximum of all these and it will pass that to the next layer. For this, I am taking the dummy data with batch size 2 and number of features as 5. So my input shape is 2 by 5. And I am assuming that I have 12 neurons in the hidden layer. So the weights will be 12 by 5 and biases will be 12. And after I calculate the dot product, I am reshaping the matrix into 2 comma 4 comma 3. Once I calculate the weighted sum, I will get the shape as 2 by 12. That 2 by 12, I am reshaping as 4 by 3. And I am taking the maximum, numpy maximum here along axis 2. So when you are taking the axis, it will start from 0. So axis 0, axis 1 and axis 2. So along this axis, I am taking the maximum value. My output shape will be 2 by 4. Let's see what we get. So this is my input here which is 2 by 5, 2 is the batch size and 5 is the number of features and this is the shape of weights, this is for bias and this is the output of weighted sum. Once I got this weighted sum, I am reshaping here and I am taking the maximum so that I will get 2 by 4 as the output here. So for max out as we discussed in the video, the number of neurons will be more than the number of outputs we need. So here I am getting only 4 outputs from the hidden layer whereas the layer has 12 neurons. Because I am taking the maximum of 3, I need 3 times the number of outputs required. If you want to learn more about how max out works, check out the video in the description below. Next we will see softmax activation. So we know that softmax is used for output layer only and also in case of multi-class classification. If you observe this, these are my pre-activations and this is the equation of softmax and finally I am getting the outputs as probability scores. And if you observe the sum of all these equal to 1. So this denominator term is ensuring that the sum of them equal to 1. So softmax takes all the pre-activations as input. So this x is a vector here which is having all these pre-activations. I am taking the same values which are shown in the image. So these are all pre-activations and when I call this softmax it will come here. First it is calculating the exponential for each and individual term and this e of x is another vector which is the exponential of all the inputs. And after that, I am taking e power x divided by sum of all of them. So this indicates that every element of this e power x will be divided by sum of all the elements. So that's why this acts as a normalization factor and that is the reason we will get the sum equal to 1 in the output. Now let's see the output we get. So if you observe the output is this 0 0.02, 0 0.90, 0 0.05, 0 0.011, so if you observe, these are my outputs I am getting here and sum of them is equal to 1. So we have implemented all the activation functions and we already have defined them and we have called those functions also. So let's plot all of them at one place. So all these step output, sigmoid, all these are already called in the above cells. So I need not to call them again. I am directly using them in the plotting function. Let's see how they look like. If you observe here, these are the plots of all activation functions and you can see the color coding here for the corresponding activation. If you observe except step sigmoid and tan h, the first three, all others are unbounded on the positive side. But most of them are bounded on the negative side. Except leaky relu, everything is bounded on the negative side. So these are all the implementations of all the activation functions. Hope this video is useful for you. I have shared the detailed videos of all these functions in the description below. If you like the content, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.